What's good, y'all? Your boy Jay here to talk about Boost. Y'all saw the title, and uh, let's just get right into it. So, I have a Z51 or a base. So, if you're watching this, you might have a Z51 or a base or a Grand Sport, and you're looking to add some power to your car. I feel your pain because we are here with the Z06s and Challengers and Chargers and Hellcats and everybody's running more power because at the end of the day, 450 crank is really not that fast. You know what I'm saying? And if you out here acting like that's fast, you need to quit it. Stop it, get some help. What I wanted to go over was all the options that you have for adding power to your Corvette. So I was gonna do an NA build originally. And then I got to looking at the cost for doing an NA build versus the cost of just strapping a blower on it or forced induction. And honestly, it's really no comparison. The, the cost of doing an NA build is far more than what? the cost of just strapping a blower to it. And you get fuck? more out of the blower. Obviously, doing an NA build, you get stronger internals and probably longer longevity of the engine but the cost is expensive there's not much you can do at home everything has to be done at a shop or with specialized tools and, and if you can do it yourself but um most of the blowers you can do right in your driveway so let's just get into the comparison of your options for a blower because i did a lot of research before i decided on which one to pick and i'm gonna save you some time so you don't have to do all the research you probably still want to do some research on your own because that's just how i am but hopefully this is a good jumping off point for you so you know which one you want to look into and which one would be best for you so when it comes to the corvettes you have pretty much two styles of superchargers that you can get you can get the root style charger and you can get the centrifugal style charger i'm gonna just say century because i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right so the centuries are the ones that look like the turbo and the root style are the style that sit right on top right on the, right on the top of the engine bay like the uh the OEM supercharger that comes on the Z06 is a root style. The OEM supercharger that comes on the Challengers and the Hellcats, those are root style supercharger. Well, those are twin screw, but um, so basically we're going to compare the, the benefits of each one, the cost, uh, the warranty between the different brands, and the potential for horsepower output. That way when you start shopping for yours, or if you're already shopping for one, you know exactly which one you're trying to go to. So, for the brands of the Century Superchargers, that's what we're going to start with. We got Pro Charger, AA, and ECS. There may be some more out there, but these are the primary brands for Corvettes that I could find. And we're just going to compare the pros and which each one offers. Basically, what makes it different from its competitors. So, let's start with a Pro Charger. Pro Charger's main selling point is that... Um, one, it comes with a tuner, a handheld tuner. None of the other Pro Charger options come with that baked into the price. And I personally feel like that's a that's a super good selling point because if you don't have access to a tuner, then you might need that handheld tuner so you can get your car on the road. Because once you put on a supercharger, obviously you can't drive it. Or you can't drive it hard anyway. So the handheld tuner is clutch, definitely. And then another good selling point for, for uh, Pro Charger is the fact that they provide you with all of the modified engine bay components that you're gonna need. Whereas your other supercharger kits are gonna have you cutting and modifying existing components like cutting into fan shrouds or uh, housings and modifying hoses. All that stuff comes pretty much standard in the other supercharger kits. So keep that in mind, so if you, if you wanna do a Pro Charger or a Supercharger and you want to be able to switch back to OEM in case you don't like it, then Pro Charger is probably the way to go because you won't have to modify any existing parts unlike the other kids. Uh, what did I say else we're going to cover? Warranty. Now, warranty for Pro Charger, I didn't see anything listed that, that's like standard, but I'm pretty sure I don't want to say I'm pretty sure because I honestly I don't know. I couldn't find anything. They do offer an extended warranty for your entire drivetrain, but that's an additional cost. 
other kits that I noticed have at least a one year warranty on the components included in the supercharger. So keep that in mind if you're concerned about warranty. But other than that, I think Procharger is a pretty safe bet. So another thing that I should have mentioned when I was talking about the Procharger is that during for the install, you don't have to remove the crank pulley. You don't have to remove the steering rack. You don't have to mess with any coolant. And I believe from what I've read is that the installation is done pretty much all done on top of the engine bay so you don't have to get underneath it. As an added note, which I should have said before, is that the Pro Chargers, they only have one kit that's available for carbon emission states. So you don't really have that many options when it comes to California customers. The AA Supercharger starts at 5400 and I believe it's the cheapest of the group. It's 50 states emissions legal. And you do have to remove the balancer. I believe you do have to remove the steering rack and you do have to relocate the ABS pump. So, but it's the cheapest of the options that you have. It's legal. It still comes in a variety of options. And I'll, I'll add this in here now. From what I have read, all of the kits have pretty much the same horsepower uh, capability because it depends on the kit that you get and out of the box most of them are going to net you 100 to 140 horsepower at the end of the day it just depends on the tune and where you get it tuned at but all of them are going to get you the pretty much the same out of the box and all of them have pretty much the same ceiling so if you're concerned about you know getting more out of one or another i don't really think that's going to be uh an issue because all of them hold records all of them are capable over a thousand horsepower cars with supporting mods of course so your main differences are going to be you know like price warranty and install so with that being said for aa i will say that the aa kit is one of those kits that comes with a one year or 12,000 mile warranty whichever one comes first so keep that in mind because I haven't seen that on the other kits. So AA is probably another top uh, option for those looking for a supercharger, especially those in California. So moving on, next we have the uh, ECS supercharger here and it starts at 56 and uh, or $61,000. Now the ECS kit does have the option for you to pay for an additional tune and so that'll save you some time there because I believe they can do an over the air tune or you send them to your, uh, your ECU. But um, you, could always, you could always get like a Diablo tuner at the end of the day if you're gonna pay for an additional tune. But I guess it would be best to get a tune from whatever company supercharger you're getting it from or a professional tuner. But there's the option for ECS now. ECS, they do not have a 50 states emissions legal kit. And you do have to cut a lot of plastic pieces. Um, you gotta pull the steering rack, you gotta remove the balancer, it, but it retains the factory air box whereas the other ones don't. So that's your benefits for ECS. I mean, I wish I had more to tell you, but they're really the kits really aren't that different when you come to the Century styles. So, if I had to choose a Century Supercharger for myself, it would either be the Pro Charger or the AA kit. One, because uh, the 50 states emissions thing, and, or Pro Charger because I don't like modifying my car parts. I don't like cutting into stuff because I mess it up or I cut too far or something and now it's, it's fucked. So, Pro Charger would probably be my option. Let's hit the root style chargers. Now, like I said, the root style sit on top. So the install for these is mostly all gonna be on top of the car. I haven't read on any of the installs that you had to modify any of your existing components either with the root style chargers. <clears throat> so your options for root style chargers are Magnuson, LT4, and Edelbrock. So starting with Magnuson, their kit starts at $7,995 and it's rated up to 1200 horsepower. So that's pretty impressive. Um, Magnuson also has the most impressive uh, warranty out of all the options available. It's a three year, 36,000 mile warranty. And their major downside though to the Magnuson kit other than the cost is uh, 
only dry sump system so only z51s and grand sports can get this kit they specifically specify that uh, it's meant for high horsepower applications and cooling is very advanced so it's not prone to the same issues that the lt4 supercharger is prone to at the overheating and they do have a kit option that comes with the tune for an additional couple hundred dollars one more thing to add though they also do not mention if it's carb emissions legal so if it's not on there it's probably not so keep that in mind not much more to say here so we'll move on to the edelbrock supercharger so the edelbrock kit starts at 6950 but that's their stage three kit which ironically is the cheapest one the stage one kit starts at 7800 so the stage two and three kits aren't available for non z51 or non dry sump systems so z51 or grand sports only there the website does have pretty clear instructions so it is diy friendly and they do come with a warranty but the warranty is a little convoluted um certain parts are warranty for specific amounts of time so if you're interested in the edelbrock you probably have to read more into that so you can get a, a better understanding one added note that i've seen from reviews and comments are that uh you have to modify the factory hood lining in order, in order to get it to fit properly under the hood it does fit but the reviews say that it's best to just cut your hood lining because it, it's rubbing and it's touching the hood liner. Okay, and lastly, there's the LT4 kit. So the LT4 kit is actually a conversion kit from the Corvette Z06. So a couple different sites sell it, but the one that I've been looking at is the Weapon X. They sell it for $3,500 and not too bad to start off with, especially if you can find a way to get a hold of a used uh, LT4 supercharger. You can save a lot of money. But um, to add in the supercharger is an extra 2000 so it'll come out to be 55 Still pretty good as far as cost goes. That makes it the cheapest supercharger option you can do. On the downside, there, aren't, there isn't going to be any warranty with this kit. The install is going to be a little different. Even on the website, they say that they, their kits are supposed to have everything you need. But there are also mentions of, uh, <clears throat> like right here it says, may need additional parts to complete the swap. You're also not going to get much support, like there is no tuning option, you have to find a tuner. But you get the OEM look, which is nice, and you know for sure it's going to fit under your hood, you're not going to have any issues like that. So, from, honestly for me, I think I'm going to go with the, LT, the LC4 route. So, that about does it. Um, if I missed anything that's a great selling point, please put it in the comments so anybody else who watches the video, they'll, you know, get that tidbit of advice. But all the links to each kit are, are going to be in the description. Um, hopefully I didn't leave anything out. I hope I saved you some time. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you know exactly which one you want to get. And obviously do a little bit more research. Always do your research. And uh, something that people forget, do your maintenance first. Like, don't just get the supercharger. <laughs> Make sure your car is good to go. Like, a lot of people strap blowers and increase horsepower. What I do on maintenance first, and then something breaks and they be mad. So, just my little added tidbit of advice. Maintenance before mods, you know how I go. But, uh, happy modding, y'all. I'm about to get out of here. Wait, that's not what I wanted to say. Happy modding, I'm gone. Y'all have a good day or a good 2021, a good everything else. I... Y'all be cool, man. I'm gone.